Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And today I'm going to be talking about contrast in photos and specifically the Precision Contrast Pro Adjustment or Pro Filter that's available in Topaz Studio. Uh, it's a very powerful filter. It's very different and gives you much more control than just the basic brightness and contrast free adjustment that comes with the, with the free download of Topaz Studio. So I'm going to walk through that, show you how I edit uh, a photo using it. Now let's just jump into Topaz Studio and here we go. Here's the photo that I'm working on, a sunset shot from the Vatican. And there's my final result after using the uh, Pro Contrast filter. So let me reset this stuff, jump in there and we'll walk through and edit. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is the brightness and contrast filter that comes included with the free download of Topaz Studio. If you click on adjustments, you can see a number of adjustments here. Those above the line are free and come with Topaz Studio which by the way, you can get that at the link below. Everything below that line, starting with abstraction down through texture, those are pro adjustments, which means you have to purchase them individually. We're gonna be talking about this one here, which is precision contrast. But first, I wanna show you brightness and contrast, which is the free one, so that I can illustrate the differences between um, the basic one that's included and the precision one that you have to pay for. So let me show you that. I've got this filter here, let me go ahead and open it. And brightness and contrast, it does offer some presets, right? So you can come through here, it's got a black and white negative, it's got what's called brighter, it's got color pop, darker, high contrast, and low contrast. Um, and there's three sliders, right? You can see them brightness, contrast, and saturation. So if you were to want to increase the contrast in this photo, you can see that it's very quickly causing a really big difference between the bright areas and the dark areas of the photo. And that's actually what contrast is. Uh, contrast is basically the difference between the brighter areas and the darker areas. And to me what it does is uh, increasing contrast gives your photo a little bit of depth and to me makes it feel more real. Um, when they're very um, uncontrasty, to me they look kind of flat and lifeless, kind of washed out. Adding contrast adds that little bit of punch and I think kicks up the photo a little bit, uh, you know, a notch or two so to speak, uh, and creates to me a, a deeper uh, sort of more intimate photo, right? Um, however, you don't have as much control with the free one. So you can bump up the contrast. You can see, oh, well, the foreground's getting too dark. The sky looks uh, actually okay. So let me bump up the brightness and try to compensate for that. But the more you drag that over, you're kind of losing some of that contrast because you're brightening the image. And here's what this comes down to is that these sliders in the basic uh, brightness contrast adjustment filter, they're global in nature, which means they impact or affect the entire photo. So you don't have that much control, um, and, and that's not good to me, right? Um, it's fine for some, maybe some basic edits, but if you really wanna have control over your photo, I think you need precision contrast. So let me jump into my edited uh, photo and show you how that uh, pro adjustment works. Okay, so here we are. So you can see my original and my final, and you can see there's a, a fair bit of contrast but it's a whole lot more than just, hey, I made the dark areas darker and the bright areas brighter, because that's what contrast does. When you drag the slider to the right and it's global, it's just accentuating that difference. So if you go look at your histogram, the dark area is gonna get darker, the bright area is gonna get brighter. So it's just creating more separation or difference. And what um, the precision contrast filter does, as you can see here, it divides it into four different sections, micro, low, medium, and high. So it's basically examining the different areas um, and for micro, these are the areas that like maybe in these uh, bits of stone where one pixel next to the next pixel are very similar and there's not a lot of difference in contrast. So that would be an area of micro contrast where the, you know, they're basically very similar, if not almost identical in terms of what they're representing. And um, what it's doing is increasing the contrast between those two. And so let me show you if I take down this back to zero. Let me just reset that to zero. Um, here, you know what I'll do instead of, well, I'll just hit zero, why not? Um, you can see that, look how flat the photo looks. And what it's doing is that micro contrast, because it's these areas that are really close to each other and very similar, it's creating the appearance of not just more depth, but also more detail in the photo. So it looks sharper and crisper and more detailed. So look, as I bring this back up, and I think I had it at about 80 or so, it looks like a much different photo. So I like that a lot. Um, and so that's what this contrast uh, filter is doing. As you can see, it's micro, low, medium, and high. So that's at 58 on low. So as I move that down, 
um, you, you can see it, it's softening up a little bit. There's a, a whole lot of that micro contrast, and that's the slider in this photo that's had the most difference. So I'll pull that back up. Medium, let me drag that down a little bit, and I'll drag low down a little bit as well, or excuse me, high. Um, not as big of an impact on the photo because, again, a lot of it is very similar, which is all this stonework on the face of the Vatican uh, itself. So I'm going to pull these back. I don't really know where I had them. Something about like that. I think I, I had this one a little bit higher. So let me do that real quick. Um, now, also note, there are some presets here. If you click on this menu, you can come down. And what it'll do is it'll give you, a, while you hover over that, it'll give you a preview of what that preset will do to your photo and the sliders will adjust accordingly. So you can see that both the photo is changing and my sliders are changing as I go over these. Now, this might be a, a situation where you want to use a preset as a starting point. Um, and I do that a lot with presets. Uh, regardless of the product that I'm using, if I'm using a preset, I'll often use that as a jumping off point and say, okay, great. That's kind of the look I want, but I want to get a little bit more control and uh, I'll go from there, right? So high dynamic range and reduced shadow. So I'm not gonna use any of those. I kinda like it the way I had it. So that's the contrast section now, and that's the beauty of the and the power really of this filter, and that is it's divided into contrast and then lighting and then color. So lighting is the next section. So I was able to bump up the shadows, uh, bump up the midtones, and take down the highlights. And so if I take this shadows back to zero, you can see that the shadowed area, which again is the foreground because kind of naturally, like the sky, especially at sunset, uh, or really probably any time of day, the sky's gonna be brighter than the, uh, than the foreground, right? So the, lifting the shadow allowed me to get back um, and get better view into the depth of the photo by, by brightening that. Uh, the midtones, you know, there's a, had a nice impact on the photo. And then highlights, you know, I was up here, and really this is more about the sky than probably anything, but I think some of the sky was a little bit too bright. And so I'm pulling that back a little bit by dropping the highlights. And um, it's getting me to a photo that I really like, right? So let me show you the before and after. And that's going through the contrast section and the lighting section. And now last is color. And so here you've got saturation, vibrant, and color contrast. So saturation and vibrant, those are basically global adjustments. And saturation is just gonna take basically all the colors and, and as you drag it to the right, it's gonna bump up the intensity of them and make them more saturated. The vibrant, or what I call vibrance or vibrancy, uh, it's gonna basically increase the saturation to the less dominant colors. And so you're gonna get a nice little bit of color pop. And I can show you here, um, especially like the little orange lights that seem to be burning in these windows in the face of the Vatican. When I take this vibrancy down, you can see they're kind of dropping along with a lot of other things. But as I bring them, uh, that back up, it's kind of popping that color, and I think it adds to the overall mood of the photo. And then color contrast is basically saturating the sort of the minute details. And so if I take that down, um, again, those same lights are being impacted. Uh, well, you know, along with some other parts of the photo, and as I bump it back up, it's adding, I think, a nice little bit of color. So the thing is with all of these sliders, there's not a, a rule about here's what you do on every photo. It's always about experimentation and practice and just seeing what works for you and what feels right and really what suits your mood because this is it's sort of a uh, uh, the kind of thing where you wanna take into account sort of how you're feeling and what kind of mood you're going for. Maybe you're going for a high key where you have like some really, um, really hardcore darks and some really hard blown out bright parts, right? Or maybe you want a more balanced exposure. I'm going for more of a balanced exposure here. And that leads me into one other component of this filter, and that is this thing called equalization. And basically what that does, it's divided the photo into zones, uh, depending on whether you choose low, medium, or high. Low is five zones, medium is 10 zones, and high is 20 zones. And these zones, what it's basically trying to do is balance out the exposure values in the photo. So I think of it as an exposure balance. That's, that's the way I think of it. It's, it's compensating uh, for the exposure in the photo based on the number of zones it creates. Uh, it's automatically creating these and you don't have any control over it. And the number of zones varies whether you go low, medium, or high. Low is five zones, as I said, medium is 10, and high is 20. Let me show you the difference in this photo. So if I, if I click on low, take a look in this upper right-hand corner of this building where it's a little bit dark there, but when I put it on low, 
you can see it's a lot darker and that's because it's only five zones so it's it's probably and i don't know how it's dividing it i don't really understand completely um, and i haven't spoken with topaz about this but i'm just going to make a guess it's taking five slices of the photo and saying okay that's that's we're going to try to balance the exposure in those five areas and so it's looking at all five areas and therefore its ability to compensate for light differences that are vast across a large swath of the photo I think is harder to do. So you get a little bit a better impact when you go to medium if you're looking at that same area. And I went to high and you can see it's basically brightened that area that was deeper in shadow. So again if you look at this little corner up there, there's low, pretty dark in that corner, and there's high pretty evenly lit. And so I like that, again, depending on the look you're going for, if you're going for a higher contrast look where you have deeper uh, dark areas or shadows and brighter light areas or highlights, then maybe not use that or keep it on low, but something to be aware of. So that's the beauty and the power of precision contrast. I think it's a great filter. Keep in mind, as with every filter, you have the ability to mask things in. And I didn't do that on this filter because I didn't feel the need to. I had so much control, especially with this micro contrast. I think it really added a nice bit of depth and it popped the appearance of detail in a lot of that stonework. I only made one more change to the photo and that was on HSL color tuning. Let me show you the before. You can see there's a lot of blue across the foreground here. So this little sign, or uh, I guess it's a sign there, some of these windows, the top of the Vatican dome and across the center here got really blue and that was because if you remember in precision contrast, I bumped up saturation and the vibrancy and the color contrast. So it starts amping up all the colors. And you know, I like the blue in the sky. I didn't want the blue in these other areas. It didn't look natural to me. So HSL color tuning allowed me to go in there. And this is another pro adjustment, by the way. So that's right down here. And I may do a future video about it, but it's, it's very powerful. It gives you really detailed control over specific colors. But what I did is I clicked on blue, I reduced the blue saturation, and then I clicked on the mask and I took the brush, and all I did is I erased that blue saturation reduction from the sky. In other words, I kept the blue in the sky and I allowed that um, blue saturation uh, reduction that I applied to apply to the rest of the photo. So I kept the blue in the sky, took the blue away from other places, and that's how that worked. Um, and you can see the difference in the photo. If you look at those areas across the center, that window, those signs, and the stuff kind of across the stairwell in front of the uh, Vatican, really blue, too blue for my taste and unnatural. And I was able to remove that quickly and easily with HSL color tuning, a saturation reduction, and a quick mask. So let me show you one more time. There's the beginning photo, unedited. Uh, all I did was straighten it. It was a little bit crooked because <laughs> I'm pretty much always crooked. I pretty much straighten every photo. I must need to see a chiropractor, I don't know. But um, I, uh, I shot it crooked, but anyway, I straightened it. That was the only thing I had done. Otherwise, this was a JPEG I took out of my library to edit here. There's the before, and there's the after based on doing a lot of work with precision contrast. Again, experiment, try things, have fun, move those sliders around, try it on different photos, see how it impacts your image, and that's it. Just have fun with it, that's the most important thing. And I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching, you can like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And if you're interested in purchasing pro adjustments for Topaz Studio, you can use uh, coupon code GYMNIX and uh, that will give you 15% off any pro adjustment. And I get a small commission if you do that. And if you do that, it's really helpful to me and I appreciate it very much. So thank you. That's it for today, my friends. Have a great one. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time. Take care and adios.